the third great Mughal emperor to leave an indelible stamp on India's art history and the world's art history, is was Prince Kuram, who, be, on assuming the throne, takes the throne name Shah Jahan. Now, you met Shah Jahan when he was still Prince Kuram in this wonderful painting, showing his father, Jahangir, with Jahangir's favorite wife, Nur Jahan, who is not Prince Karam's mother. And in fact, Prince Karam and Jahangir had a very conflictual relationship. Prince Karam was actually so estranged from his father, Jahangir, after about 1621, that he actually was associating with and aligning himself with um, kingdoms that were enemies of Jahangir literally affiliating with aiding and abetting, you could say, um, enemies of his father's that are here in the Deccan Plateau. So true um, grandson of Akbar and son of Jahangir, he actually brought, when he traveled to these enemy territories, he brought an artist with him. At least one, we don't know exactly the details, but we do have portraits that were made that are clearly eyewitness portraits while Shah Jahan was in these regions, including this one of the very interesting Malik Ambar, who was from Ethiopia and had been sold into slavery in one of these sultanates in the Deccan, who rose through the ranks and actually become, became a brilliant and highly regarded military commander. Perhaps the saddest and yet, I don't know, most ridiculous aspect of his his enmity toward his own father is that he actually took some paintings that had been portraits of Jahangir with, with Prince Karam or Shah Jahan riding behind him and he literally had an artist redo the face so that Jahangir's face is gone and now we have Shah Jahan's face and then Prince Karam's face is gone and now we have Shah Jahan's son's face, as if he's trying to literally erase his father from the pictorial record, which tells us how important these paintings were as pictorial records. Yet Shah Jahan's most lasting contribution is not in the field of painting as it was for his father and grandfather. Instead, it's his contribution to architecture and especially to the magnificent Taj Mahal, named for Mumtaz Mahal. The name was given to her by Shah Jahan as her, her honorific name, that she is the chosen one of the palace. She died in childbirth, giving birth to their 14th child. And this is a kind of massive monument to love and grief. At the time, the Mughal court poet Kalim expressed it this way, since heaven's vault has been standing, an edifice like this has never risen to compete against the sky. So he's using the idea of vault and heaven to make us think about this extraordinary silhouette of this building against the sky, a silhouette that is multiplied and magnified by its reflection in the water because there are also water channels that make this not just a building, but a kind of we will see an expression of the idea of the Charbagh, the Islamic four-part garden of paradise. But my favorite, my favorite way of describing the building, the architecture, is the great Indian poet who so succinctly expresses it as a teardrop on the cheeks of time. 